Hello, and thank you for joining us here at the Clark Planetarium for our next engineering challenge. Now, you may not, you may not think of lakes, rivers, and oceans when learning about space, but study of water and watercrafts is actually very important to helping us understand our universe. Water has properties that we need to understand in order to help astronauts while in space. NASA is also involved in many projects monitoring sea level and water quality here on Earth. There's evidence of potential liquid water and other compounds like liquid methane on other planets and moons. If humans ever make it to these places, we will need to know how to best build a boat that will stay afloat. Speaking of boats, how do boats float? It's easy to imagine a small rowboat or a canoe floating down a river, but how do these humongous tankers and cruise ships make it across vast oceans? The answer lies within some very simple physics. Boats rely on two concepts to float, displacement and buoyancy. Displacement is the amount of water something occupies or pushes away when submerged. Imagine if you were to put a marble uh, and a large rock, or in this case, a heavy <laughs> meteorite, into a bowl of water. Both would sink. There's our marble. But not much water is displaced or risen up out of it. Yeah, so you can't see this going up very high. But if we do our meteorite large rock... Carefully, so as not to break the glass. <laughs> our water went a lot higher. So since the water went higher up, the rock has more displacement in it. The height of the, or simply put, an object will displace a volume of water equal to its volume. Buoyancy is an upward force generated by the weight of the water. So an object will float if it weighs less than the amount of water it displaces. Engineers design boats to displace lots of water so they will float. That is the V shape you will see on the bottom of boats. The water pushes up on the boat and it is pushed outward by the V, thus increasing the area of the boat and the amount of water that is being displaced. Notice the bigger the boat, the bigger the V-shaped hull. Your challenge today is to make a simple yet effective boat out of just one material, a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of aluminum foil. Your goal is to make a boat that is no bigger than six inches in length, six inches in width, and six inches in height. This boat must also float, of course, and not tip over and not leak any water. Uh, you will also want to see how much weight you can carry before it sinks. You can do this by simply adding pennies, marbles, or other similarly weighted objects one by one until it sinks. Let's see how our designs did here. All right. You ready, Chris? I'm ready. Okay, so this one is a flat bottom boat. Mm. And so that seems like it's going to take up a lot of area. So we'll have to see how it does. So here's it. here it goes. It's floating and it's not taking on water. Hooray! Woohoo! This is a V-shaped, kind of semi-V-shaped. <laughs> and this one floats. It's nice. not taking on water either. Perfect. So let's start adding. I will add one marble at a time to each of them. Both still holding. All right, we're going to go more. We'll let's do, do more. We'll do two at a time. Actually, that's not even enough weight. I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to do four. Uh-oh, we built two <laughs> effective of boats. We did. They're not sinking. Let's see how many we can get in here. Ooh, they're starting to go down a little, though. They are. I'm noticing with the V-shaped hole that you do have to watch that you're not putting all the weight on just the one side. True. And that's a trick when you're doing anything that you're kind of trying to max out and see what it's what its max stability or its max weight is. You do have to make sure you're balancing everything. That makes a lot of sense. All right. I don't think we're anywhere close to sinking these. I don't know. The square one seems to be tilting a little bit here. A little bit. It's still doing pretty well, though. Still it is creeping up on right. the sides, though. All right, I am still going four at a time, and these are the relatively larger Those marbles. Are pretty big marbles. We actually have them in the store. That we do. They're so cute. And I don't need to take any home today. <laughs> <laughs> or do I? <laughs> My goodness. Can you see the inside of these? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. There are quite a few marbles in there. Oh, the very edge of yours. 
Did we take on a little bit of water on the square boat? Not yet. Not yet. Almost, though. Almost. <laughs> Let's see if I can keep it pretty balanced over here. It is a little shorter on that side, I think, is part of the mm. struggle. Oh! There it goes! <laughs> All right. Looks like your boat won out on this one. And I was sure yours was going to go longer. <laughs> we'll let you keep putting more in there till it sinks. While you do that, oh, let me... Oh, there, there it goes! <laughs> Not too much so longer, but a little close. bit. I think mine only made four... No, five more marbles than yours did, so... Well, there you both go. pretty close. Pretty, pretty close. close. Well... If you enjoy this challenge at home and you want to pick up some other awesome engineering activities, you can check out our Planet Fun Store here at the Planetarium. We have lots of different other engineering stuff, including lots of boat stuff like you see here. So go ahead and check our website for our updated hours. Thank you again. Whoops, there we go. Thank you again for joining us here at the Clark Planetarium. Don't forget to share your boat designs with us at hashtag Clark Planetarium and hashtag engineering challenge. See you later, and happy engineering. Thanks, guys.